what is a special extra video for you this week we're looking at some alternative halloween episodes number one hazardville horror this is a memorable episode from the popular TV series The Dukes of Hazard. In this comedic and action-packed episode, the Duke family finds themselves entangled in a spine-tingling adventure, combining the usual care chases and good old boy charm with the touch of the supernatural. The episode begins with the Duke cousins Bo and Luke investigating reports of strange happenings in the nearby town of Hazardville. Rumours are spreading that the ghost of a long-dead Hazard County Sheriff has returned to seek vengeance and the entire town is in a state of fear and paranoia. As the Dukes delve deeper into the mystery, they discover that the ghostly occurrences are not quite what they seem, and with the help of their cousin Daisy and their trusty care, the General Lee, the Dukes piece together the clues and unravel the truth behind the so-called haunting. Show them first, and then let me know what you find out, because I'm staying here with my silver irregardless, because I never did trust the Duke. Come on, Ross. Cletus, come on. Roscoe, I wouldn't go back there. I think there's a ghost. What? Son, will you hush? You ain't no... You're wrong, you're wrong. The real crooks are headed for the slammer. Number two, October the 31st. This one's a memorable episode from the popular TV series The Fall Guy. This action-adventure show starring the charismatic Colt Seavers, a Hollywood stuntman who moonlights as a bounty hunter, combines adrenaline-pumping stunts with thrilling escapades. In this special Halloween-themed episode, Colt Seavers and his trusty crew, Howie and Jody, find themselves facing a mysterious and potentially supernatural challenge. The episode kicks off when they're hired to track down a notorious bail jumper who has a penchant for evading capture. However, the twist in this case is that they're hunt takes place on Halloween night. As Colt delves deeper into the investigation, he discovers that the entire town where their target was last seen is enveloped in a spooky carnival-like atmosphere. Unexplained and eerie occurrences seem to plague their pursuit. The episode keeps viewers on edge as the line between the real and the supernatural becomes blurred, creating an eerie atmosphere as the night unfolds. <laughs> jumping all right right out of the exits face it this movie is a total embarrassment harvey you are supposed to be helping my career not sabotaging it yeah well who had time to read the script i mean all i do is hiss and drool for 120 pages well at least you know he won't die of boredom <laughs> not as long as you're around it was preston delville i'm telling you he's alive <laughs> Number three, Halloween Night. This one's an iconic episode from the TV series Knight Rider. In this special Halloween-themed episode, Michael Knight, along with his high-tech crime-fighting care, Kit, embarks on an adventure that combines action-packed sequences with the spooky ambiance of Halloween. The episode opens with Michael Knight receiving a tip about a nefarious criminal gang planning a major heist on Halloween night. As he delves into the investigation, Michael realises that the criminals are using the cover of Halloween to blend in with the costumed revellers as they carry out their devilish plan. To counter this threat, Michael and Kit find themselves racing against time to thwart the criminals and prevent the heist, with Kit's advanced technology and Michael's expertise making for an exhilarating and action-packed showdown. Uh, uh, lobby. Garage. <laughs> She's dead, isn't she, Michael? I heard the water running. She was there. She was right there. Glory, 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 I heard it is. What's that? Proof. Proof. If Bonnie wasn't hallucinating, it's a hologram projector with a mini cassette recorder. Number four, 
In The Amazing Spider-Man, Season 2, Episode 4, this one's titled The Kirkwood Haunting, our friendly neighbourhood superhero, Spider-Man, faces a unique challenge combining elements of mystery and the supernatural along with his investigative journalism. The episode kicks off with J. Jonah Jameson, the gruff editor of the Daily Bugle, assigning a peculiar task to Peter Parker, who also happens to be the web-swinging superhero Spider-Man. Jonah asks Peter Parker to investigate a supposed ghost sighting at the Kirkwood estate. The stakes are high, as the alleged haunting is suspected to be a scam to manipulate a widow into changing her late husband's will. As Peter Parker delves into the investigation, he discovers a web of intrigue surrounding the Kirkwood estate. And to make matters more complicated, Julie Masters, a rival journalist looking for the next big scoop, is also on the scene. Are you a believer, Mr. Parker? I try to keep an open mind. Perhaps you could help us get to the truth. How can Peter help? Now, he's a photographer. He could come back tomorrow and try to photograph the apparition. The tales of hauntings have been recorded for centuries. They represent a rich collection of phenomena that are not easy to ignore. Have you gone crazy? Mr. Jameson, there is an entire department of parapsychology at the university. Now, are they all idiots? Yes, they are. That's all a lot of bunk. Number five. In the classic TV series Mork and Mindy, there was an episode titled Morkville Horror. It was a hilarious and memorable instalment that added a comedic twist to the supernatural. This one was aired in November 1980 originally. The story begins when Mork, the lovable alien from the planet Orc, played by Robin Williams of course, becomes convinced that a spooky mansion in their neighbourhood is genuinely haunted. His fascination with earthly customs, mixed with his unique perspective as an extraterrestrial, leads to some comic misinterpretations of what he believes to be ghostly occurrences. His enthusiastic investigation into the supposed haunting of the mansion creates a series of laugh-out-loud moments, with Mindy, his human roommate, initially dismissing his claim, but eventually getting drawn in to the supernatural fun. Well, I was at the house, and I was and I was hanging wallpaper, and the wind blew me across the room. <laughs> then, this is a terrifying point. I was standing there, and the furniture started attacking me. Yes, a little ottoman and a little ottoman woman, too. They're coming at me. Have you been hitting the cream soda again? <laughs> no, I mean, you gotta believe me. You gotta believe me. Believe you? What am I supposed to believe? That my house is haunted? <laughs> But after Mork told us what went on in your house, well, I did a little research, and I found this old book in the library, Colorado Legends. You recognize this? Yeah, it kind of looks like my house. After that, the sisters boarded themselves up in the house, and they were never seen again until the day they died. Number six, Cat's Paw. This one's an episode from the original Star Trek series, specifically from the second season in 1967. So in Cat's Paw, the crew of the starship USS Enterprise, led by, of course, Captain James T. Kirk, respond to a distress signal from the uncharted planet Pyrus 7. Upon arriving at the planet, they encounter a mysterious and eerie environment that's quite unlike anything they've seen before. The planet's landscape is shrouded in fog, and the crew soon discovers that they are not alone. They encounter a trio of powerful and seemingly supernatural beings, Sylvia, Korob, and a giant black cat. As the crew investigates the strange occurrences and their mysterious hosts, they uncover a web of deception, illusions and dark magic, and it becomes clear that these beings are not what they seem, and their motives are tied to an ancient ritual. This episode is well known for its eerie and atmospheric qualities, as well as its intriguing blend of sci-fi and the supernatural, the crew's determination and the contrast between the science and the magic creating quite the dynamic. <laughs> Why a cat? Racial memories. A cat is the most ruthless, most terrifying of animals. We could have jumped Scott and Sulu at any time, we didn't know. Number seven, The Lucy Show. This was a beloved American television sitcom, of course, starring the iconic Lucille Ball. In the episode titled Lucy and the Monsters, which was a Halloween special, Lucille Ball's character Lucy Carmichael finds herself in a comical and chaotic situation. 
The episode Lucy and the Monsters revolves around Lucy's encounter with a group of eccentric individuals who are dressed as monsters for a Halloween party. And Lucy, always eager for excitement and adventure, unwittingly becomes entangled in their monster-themed escapades. She tries to help these monsters with their various predicaments, but her efforts lead, of course, to a series of hilarious misunderstandings and mishaps. And whether it's attempting to understand their bizarre behaviour, offering assistance in their peculiar monster activities, or getting caught up in their antics, Lucy's typical misadventures reach new levels of hilarity. Who are you? I am the head of the house. <laughs> Then you can go. Yeah. Then you can escape. Viv, look in here. Look in the I'll look on the outside. You look on the inside. Ah! 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 Going somewhere, lady. All right, well, well, we were just looking around. Oh, yeah, it's a nice place you have here. Yeah. Well, they should be done by now. And if the operation is a success, we will have a perfect housekeeper. Yes, you may serve the first course. All right, the first you guys. course will be your last course. Ah! Ah! Number eight, The Basil Brush Show. Yes, this one's a British children's television programme featuring the popular puppet character Basil Brush, known for his catchphrase, Boom Boom! In season five, episode six, this one's titled Haunted House, Basil Brush embarks on a spirited adventure that combines his usual brand of humour with a touch of the supernatural. In this episode, Basil Brush, along with his human companions, finds themselves in a spooky and supposedly haunted house. The episode unfolds with Basil and his friends visiting an eerie mansion which is rumoured to be plagued by restless spirits and mysterious occurrences. As they explore the haunted house, they encounter a strange series of supernatural events, all of which Basil responds to with his signature humour and flair, of course. Whether it's mischievous ghosts, strange sounds or eerie apparitions, Basil's witty one-liners and clever antics keep the atmosphere light-hearted and comical. They go to this, like, supposedly haunted house and see if they can catch ghosts on camera. I can't believe you two are scared by this. I am the caretaker here at Shiverington Manor. Be trying to catch a glimpse of the manor's most famous apparition, the ghost of Lady Shiverington. Hey! Okay, that's it. I've had enough. I'm out of here! Me too! Oi! You two aren't going anywhere! Um... I've got a tiny problem. Just that I've drunk two flasks of anil stew tea. And I really need to go to the little fox cap's room. Number nine. Now then, here's going back a bit. In the classic TV series Lassie, there was an episode titled The Witch, presented a heartwarming story, often emphasising the theme of misunderstandings and the powers of friendship. The episode The Witch revolves around a series of mysterious events in a small, close-knit community, and local rumours and superstitions about a mysterious old woman living on the outskirts of the town have the townsfolk believing that she is a witch. However, Lasse, the loyal collie and central character of the series, knows better. As the plot unfolds, the town's children, particularly Timmy Martin, who often forms a special bond with Lasse, become embroiled in the rumours they dare each other to visit the so-called witch's house, resulting in misunderstandings and unfounded fears. They mostly cast spells on people. Who said that? Woody. Although the belief in witches still persists among some backward people, in civilized countries, the superstition has almost disappeared. What's that? You... You gave Mom too much change. Decent folks come to the door when they got a reason. She'll get bewitched! So that's it, eh? You think I'm a witch, do you? You betcha I'm here! I told you not to come snooping around here again. And number 10, The Starships Are Coming. This is an episode from the popular 70s TV series Wonder Woman, starring Linda Carter, of course, in the iconic title role. This episode originally aired during the show's second season and is known for its blend of sci-fi and adventure. In The Starships Are Coming, Wonder Woman, also known as Diana Prince, finds herself facing a unique and otherworldly challenge. The episode's plot kicks off when a series of mysterious UFO sightings and reports of alien contact begin to grip the public's attention. Concerned about the potential for panic and chaos, Diana Prince investigates these claims to uncover the truth behind the supposed alien visitation. 
As Diana delves into the investigation, she encounters a variety of characters who are convinced that starships and their extraterrestrial occupants are real. Some are true believers, while others see an opportunity for personal gain, and the episode explores the themes of belief, scepticism, and the human nature's response to the unknown. I'm Diana Prince with the IADC. I know that you're very upset, but I would like to ask you a few questions. Mrs. Is that Mrs. All right? Wilson, I suppose. Uh, uh, a few words with you, please. He and his equipment are inseparable. He says he always wants to be ready for the big story. You mean he had this with him when he was carried off by that UFO you saw? Stop our <laughs> Wait, Colonel, look. No starships, no battle, no invasion. Turn it up. The broadcast you were just watching and the one transmitted earlier today were part of a hoax. And there you have it. Ten alternative Halloween for... Halloween episodes from popular television series from various different countries and various different decades. Did I miss any good ones out? We're going to have to do another one of these next year, aren't we? You let me know in the comments if I've missed any really good ones. Like the video, please, because it really helps the videos to get seen by other people. Share the videos with your friends, please. And, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And all that good YouTube stuff. Bye.